So we got a call this morning. We have a dozer down with a final drive failure. It's a D10R out at one of our customers' big copper mines. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you an example. Of one of the, I, we actually have the final drive in the shop right now. They're tearing it down and we're getting it ready to get rebuilt. I'm just gonna show you what they look like complete because the one that we have in the shop right now is already in pieces. So here's the final drive or one of the ones, this is what it looks like. This is a D10R final drive. We have this same one in the shop getting tore down. I'll take you guys over there right now and we're gonna go ahead and rebuild that thing. Okay, well we're inside the shop. We have our final drive completely disassembled. New races are put in. We're working on installing the other races right now. Bearing kit and our cat duocone installer. We'll use that later. So anyway guys, we gotta hurry up, get this thing built. We got a dozer down. We gotta get that thing back up. All right, so Phil's been working on these bearings. These are actually frozen. They've been in our deep freezer over there on the other side. But if you can see, you know, he pretty much just pressed this thing in here by hand. Now we're gonna use this and a hammer and just tap that thing right in. Ting. Look at that, perfect install with an ice cold bearing. We'll go ahead and we'll go do that probably 10 more times and then we'll have all of our races installed. Last ones? Last two. I like how they start like getting all foggy the second you take them out. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely hard frozen. Uh, they've been in there for about 18 hours or so. Okay. Much easier to install instead of having them be warm. Absolutely, yeah. It shrinks them just that couple hundred thousand that you need. Yep. Just for that press fit. Look at that, it's all fogged up. Yep, you can kind of feel it, huh? Yeah, you can feel it. Go in, slide in, hit the groove. And you're not even hitting it that hard. Not that hard, just letting the weight of the hammer do the work. One more whack, you got it. Oh, well, maybe one, one more. One more. You'll hear that ting. You're done. Yep. Perfect. Sweet. Are we pressing bearings now into pins? Oh no, uh, we got one more. One more. Make sure it's the right way. You only get one chance. <laughs> There's your pin. Sweet, and those are installed. Okay, what next? Uh, now we're gonna take these and put them in the carrier and press the pins in. And we kept the pins in the... In the... the pins are in the freezer right now for the slip fit through here. Okay, cool. All right. Just there. Ready when you are. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna swing this thing over to the press and get this thing ready to put all the gears in it. Plus, what we can do now, I'll get some scotch right and I'll just clean up these holes a little bit okay. from when we press them out. Yep. And then we'll go ahead and get our new pins, slam them in there. Just kind of clean this floor up a little bit. Pretty good. We'll go ahead and we'll do that on those other three and on the bottoms. All right, so we are all set up here now. We got this thing cleaned up on all the bores and underneath too. So now Phil's gonna go ahead, take these gears, take these cones, cups, cones, cones. cones. Taking the new cones.
Try not to smash your fingers. Yeah. Pretty tight tolerances. Nice snug fit. Yep. So we got them in there. We got both sides in. So now we'll just rotate this 90 degrees here and then uh, we'll be ready to press two in. Cool. All right. Now we're both in the middle. You can see all the way through so the pins will have a place to go. We're ready for uh, a press and some pins. Ready to send it all the way? Send it all the way. Now we gotta, we gotta be strategic about this, right? Because once we, once we grab that pin out of there, we gotta be ready to go. Yep, yep, and I think it is, uh, you know, everything's pretty centered up. I think the only thing we gotta do is get this plugged in so we're not- Okay, yeah. <laughs> and this is our OTC Porta Power here. What is this, a hundred ton? Yep, hundred ton press. Clean. All right, and our glorious deep freezer here. Big pin. Big pins. I don't Let's want do my it. fingers to stick to it. Yep. Yeah. Alright, well, let's go nice and easy. There it goes. Pressing it in. Oh, we're at a stroke. Okay, clear. Clear. Once we put our washer in there, it should release that. Yeah, there's not that much actual pressure on it. We just need to, once we put our washer in there, it's gonna push that back up and it should roll nice. All right, so we have this carrier on the ground. All the pins are pressed in it, all the new bearings. So the way we're gonna set this to make sure that we have the correct amount of play in these gears is we always push it a little bit too far this direction. So we can take this and completely flatten it out. As you can see, this one's a little bit high. It's kind of hard to tell, but this guy is shaking. It's a little bit high. So we're gonna take this, take a little hammer, tap that down flush. And then there's these little plates that go on here. These guys right here. And it holds them perfectly flat on the carrier. And this will adjust and make sure our preload on our bearings is all good. Might need a bigger hammer. Ooh, that sounded, that sounded good. like it. Oh yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh, there it is. Yep. A little bit bigger hammer. Just give them a little smack. Now it's uh, perfectly good in there. Love it. We'll just do that with the rest of these. A little bit bigger hammer. Tap, tap, tap. Set our plates in. Okay. Oh yeah. That one's perfect. Okay. Uh, that one needs a little bit more, a little bit more love. This back corner over here. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Good to go. And hold on, let me. This one's pretty good. It is a little tiny bit tight, but we'll just go ahead. Give a little bit of the smack. Okay. Yep. Sick. Loosened it right up. Yep. Nice. That's how you. Well, it says in the book. Uh, to just hit it literally says do this so nothing we're doing wrong here and we have that it this is a basically a bearing setter goes in there smacks it flat now we can go ahead and put our covers on yeah those are those nice square ones huh yeah 
Oh yeah, look at that, you have like a little lip in there. Yep. They, they must squeeze out and really flatten out. All right. Oh, uh, we need a little more close probably. It's okay, she'll set in there. And if you guys ever have trouble with that too, you can take a little bit of that green grease and set that in there. I'm not too concerned because we can set it up in there and make sure that that seal is perfectly uh, centered in that cap. Not gonna be an issue. A little bit of red Loctite. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of dab of red Loctite. Don't need much. Just enough to hold these bolts in from the vibrations and to almost seal it from the outside elements because these are gonna be going through a lot of stuff. I'll put a tiny, tiny bit more on there, a couple more threads. Because you don't want them absolutely impossible to take out. These are just little bolts. You don't want to be putting heat on them. Okay. That's the deal. Put those in. Okay. Put down ready to rock? Yep. Okay. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll snug these down and Caterpillar has a torque spec on them. We'll go ahead and we'll just torque these bolts down after we zip them in here. Just a light, light tap. Not sending it hard. Not sending it hard. Okay. Okay. Now we'll go ahead, we'll get our torque wrench out. We'll go ahead and we'll torque all these bolts. All right, guys, we got our torque wrench out, torque spec. 35 to 45 foot pounds. We're gonna go ahead and set it right at 40. How about 30, 37? That sounds real good. Done. Okay. One more check. We always do a double check because you never know if that second bolt on that yep. lid you tightened down had loosened the first bolt. Yep. We'll just do that triple check. And especially that O-ring smashing down. Yep. Yeah, you want it to be nice and even. Good. Sweet. Well, I'm just on hold here with the with our cat dealer. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get beautiful this color. one here. Right over there and do the same thing that we did with the carrier right behind Phil. Done deal. Cool. All right, same process as that one. Get her done. Okay, getting our new, what are they, cones? They are cones. Cones. Made Weird. in the United States of America. Because yep. whenever we build final drives or we build any for our customers, we really try to use all cat genuine parts or NTN, Bauer, stuff that's made here in the USA. Chinese stuff, anything aftermarket, we try to stay away from as much as possible. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do when the cat dealer or other places can't supply those parts. But when we can get United States built stuff, we try and do that. I love seeing that. Made United in the USA. States of America, baby. This is putting our own people to work, you know? Yeah. Like, just giving back to our country right here by buying American product. Just check that out. There's a reason you spend 40% more for something that says CAT on it and has USA printed on it. 
you can honestly you can feel the difference oh and, yeah and by weight and just by the cleanliness and how the machining processes and yep it, they're, they're a beautiful product all right cone on the bottom cone on the bottom <laughs> Sending, sending. These are actually much lighter than the other gears. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Got our washer here. I think we're gonna go ahead and get away with a smaller hammer, but we'll give it a shot. You might have to press down on that side. Yep. Holding. She's starting to go down a little bit. Still a little tight. Okay. <laughs> Nailed it. Tap it again. Tap it again, Barb. Oh, that's... Oh, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Okay. We'll give one more tap. Oh, yeah. Yep. Done deal there. Perfect. All right, we're going to do this three more times. Nice. Perfectly flush. We'll do one more smack. Not sure if you guys can hear that pinging, but that means we're, we're flat on here. That feels really, really nice. Now, I know you guys can't tell, but this gear right here, it's nice, it's super firm because when we pressed in this way, it pushed the uh, base of our bearing up against, which it's what happens when you press these in. So we take this and then we take our hammer and we smack it flat again. And that basically pushes this pin down exactly where it wants to be. It'll start spinning like this one. So if you guys notice, this one's stuck, won't go. I can shake the whole thing. I'll take this guy. We try and be very careful here, careful here with, with our smacks. Yep. Smack it again. Smack it again. Again. So I, you can start hearing a ping. Starting to ping. That feels pretty good. And watch this. Just like that. No play there. Super nice. 100% good to go. And this one, we're gonna have to put it back in the press because we actually didn't go far enough. So we'll have to put this back in here, push it back up, smack it back down, and that'll be just like the rest of them. A little bit of Loctite. Now all these spin super nice. And no play. Another thing too you guys will notice, I marked all these pins. Basically, we're keeping the gears that we pulled out in the same hole that we put them in. For some reason, it's the way that they ride around the sun gear. <clears throat> I'm not sure why they tell you to do that, but we do it anyway just to make sure that we don't uh, change these gears up into the wrong slots. Okay, you go ahead and zip these down lightly. He's getting the torque spec for us. Nice and easy, down. This guy and our torque is set 40 foot pounds. Here we go. There. 
This one is done. There's an update in the cat procedure on this one. We need to retorque these up to 100 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those bolts out, reset the Loctite. I'll get back to you guys when we put these bolts back in and we're gonna go ahead and re-torque those to 100 foot pounds. Resetting our torque to 100 foot pounds. Okay, 100. Okay, check there. Oops. Check again. I'm gonna just check these last two. And done. Okay, sweet, both carriers. Bearings are pressed, everything is torqued. Now we can go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the spindle and hub. All right guys, so we went ahead and we are gonna move on to the hub, putting races in that. I also, actually Phil remembered, we marked all these bolts to remember that we've torqued these. So all of these are marked with a red X to remind us that we do not need to go back here. These are torqued and ready to go. So Phil's gonna go in here right now. We've already uh, pressure washed the hub out but we're just gonna go ahead and get all that dust out of there with a nice rag, some brake clean, get that all cleaned out for our new race that we're gonna install. Okay, Phil's over there, he's getting our race that's in the freezer. We're getting ready to set it in. I'm just giving this mallet a nice clean. That way we don't have a bunch of oil and grease on it as we're punching it in. A little bit of brake clean here. Clean our mallet up. No dirt. Okay, done deal. Now we're ready to insert the race. And make sure, there. I believe there's two different sizes. There is. You're gonna have a, a big one? one and a small one. That's gonna be the big one, I'm pretty sure. Large one. Okay. And Let's do it to it. It is cold. Is it cold? Cold, cold. Rag cold. Okay. Oh, we need to clean that before you do that. Spray it with brake clean. Because the causing lean on there. Yep. So we'll just spray that down. Oops. Watch your face. Yep. Okay, another rag really quick. I need to clean that rag. Yep, there you go. Clean that race up really nice. Tap in here. Yep. Tap. Okay, hold that. I'll start smacking it. Hey, you guys, you would never get this. In here, I don't care how hard you beat it, unless it was frozen. Yep. To the bottom. We're set pretty good. I'll go ahead and I'll take our smaller hammer. Yep. 
We'll just tap this. Back over here. Set nice. Okay. Turn around one more time. Done deal. Perfectly set. Nice and tight. Go ahead and take a pick. If we have any brass in here, we'll dig it out. And I'll also take a feeler gauge and I'll make sure we're set in. We have our smallest feeler gauge in here. We're gonna go look at the race. You can see we cannot get our feeler gauge in there. Let's just make sure that we have set that race all the way to the bottom, exactly where it should be. Cannot get that feeler gauge in there. She's good to go. Okay, second race going in. That's our friend Jack. He's super helpful. Yes, he is. Nice. Sweet. can't tell it is the next day we are working on that d10 t final drive and we're getting ready to set the hub onto the spindle so we're going to go ahead heat up some bearings here's what we do to put uh big races what we do is we heat up an oven we found this over at the dump she still works by the way yeah yeah this guy wired it up did you have to rewire it today uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit? Did, did, <laughs> did she pop the breaker on a feller? Uh, yeah, you know. We got her with no wires. You got a new plug for it. She fired right up. So the plan is we're going to use induction heating, right? This is induction heating. Yep. We're going to take that race right there, and we're going to go ahead and put it in the oven at 300 degrees for like 20 minutes, pull it out, and that thing should slide right over the spindle. That way we don't have to use any sort of torches or potentially a tactic that's going to overheat the bearing and lose its uh, like structural integrity. So this should be the perfect way to do this. Got the gloves on? Got the gloves on. Oh, dude, the light even works in this thing. The light works. Angle it on Woo! the side to let some air get under the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. 300. Dude, this is like an easy bake oven. Yeah, <laughs> easy bake parts. Got ourselves a special delivery from the cat dealer. 